sure you've got children's church. Tom, I do. Come on, kids. <coughs> Come on down. Don't get too comfortable now. We're going to be moving. Come on down. Got some more coming. We're going to go on a trip. We're going to go around. We're going to move around. We're going to go on a trip. Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Well, you know, I used to play when I was your age, I spy. Have you ever played I spy? I'd get a color and I'd say, I spy something red. And everybody would look around and it would say, what's red? And you'd look around and say, that's red. And you'd guess, all right, is it that? Is it that? Is it that? And then, where is it that? And then if you got it right, then you win. Well, I was reading this morning in my devotions. It says every day, every single day, we should be thankful. We should look around and see and say what we're thankful for. Now, I can't swallow too good. I got a lump right here. Oh, you want to see it? Uh. So I'm going to need help. Everybody line up, single file. Line up. I, they cut my neck. They cut my neck and put metal in it Cause I, so I could be a bionic woman. All right, you got to stay just where you are, and Miss Susan can help me. Stay, look, now, now I'm going to ask everybody to help me because I can't talk too good today. So when we see something, if you see something you're thankful for, you need to tell me, okay? Like, like I am so thankful for Miss Phyllis because she helps with the children. I'm so thankful for that. All right, see, so that was easy, wasn't it? Elijah, I do. You're thankful for Elijah up there. Kind of mean. No, okay. No. Okay. So we're gonna go. We're gonna be happy and thankful, and we're gonna go on a tour. But what I need from the adults, because I bet you already woke up this morning, didn't you? And I bet you you already thank God for all the wonderful things He's given you, didn't you? Uh, did you? Okay, I'm sure you woke up this morning and thanked him for some beautiful surroundings we have and the glorious world we have and the wonderful weather we have and all the people we have. Well, let's just stop there. We're going to go. All right, here we go. Look, somebody's already tithed in there. I'm thankful that we are able to tithe and we have money that we can give Jesus a tenth of what we earn that we're able to give back because of everything he's given us. So I want the church to say, you can do anything you want to. You can clap when we find something we're thankful for. You can say, praise the Lord. You can say, hallelujah. I'd love it if people said different things. You want to practice? All right, let's, some can clap. Some can say, amen. Some can say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See there? All right. Get, all right, get in line. Get in line. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, I am so thankful for these steps so I don't have to climb up on this wall. I am so thankful. Oh, my goodness, I am so thankful. There is a choir. Did you see that? A choir that sings and praises God. What's this? Mr. Bobby. Huh? What is this? Tell me. What's this? A guy. Guy. Okay. Who is that guy? Preacher Eddie. Who? Preacher Eddie. Preacher Eddie? 
Hi, kids. Oh. He directs our music. Okay, come on down. Come on down, kids. Come on down. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Oh, I see something. I see something. Y'all not going to know this, but this is my deacon. Come up here. This is my deacon. And you know what? Baby name. Uh, no. My deacon calls me on Fridays and prays for me. Wow. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Look here. Isn't he sweet? Oh. He comes here and he sits here. Is so sweet in our church. We got such sweet. So let's let's get now. You tell me. Is there anything else that you're thankful for? Uh, my mom and dad. Huh? Your your mom and dad. Only mom and Thank you for my mom. Thank you for your mom. Thank you for my daddy. Thank you for my daddy. Thank you that was me. I love Grammy the more. Okay. All right. So, Jesus. You're thankful for Jesus? Well, let's end on that because we don't have anything if we don't have Jesus in our hearts. I'm thankful for, for the TV and cartoons. Okay. Well, okay, let's go ahead and pray. You supposed to read Jesus. Jesus. All right. Let's go. Let's hold hands and pray. Let's go. Okay. Come on. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we raise our hands, or we said Amen, or we said Praise the Lord, and we walked around in this church and said Thank you, do we really mean it? Lord, we need to get excited. And we need to wake up. And we need to show these kids what it's like to be thankful for what we have. And as we do that, they will learn to be thankful for when they wake up. Lord, I pray that you will help these children wake up and say thank you, Lord, for today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say thank you, Lord, for today. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord, for today. Buddies, after the kids sing. And I think we can all say we're thankful that Cynthia is back with us in her children's church. Tom and the choir, I believe that uh, call to worship this morning, come, that is one of my favorite call to worship now. And I was looking at the congregation and everybody was getting into it this morning. That was such a wonderful way to begin our service this morning. Well, good morning. Good to see each of you this morning. It's good to see that number coming back up in Sunday school just a little bit. But we still got a lot of sickness in the church, and we still got a lot of people out, and we need, uh, need to remember them. Let me share a thank you note. Uh, dear church family, your cards, emails, texts, and calls are all so much appreciated. The sudden passing of my dad has been a very difficult time. Please keep us in your prayers. And this is from Frank and Jill and Julie and, and Ashton or and Jake, and we just need to remember them. Uh, continue to remember them in a special way. Also remember George and Carolyn May, Carolyn's sister uh, that we've had on our, our prayer list. Juanita Rhines went to be with the Lord this morning in Indiana. And uh, we need to remember uh, Sharon and Ted Mitchell. Uh, Ted had his MRI early this morning. I haven't heard back uh, from Sharon. They're checking to see if he might have had a stroke. 
and he's at Park West. So remember Sharon and, and Ted this morning. And do what? Oh, okay. We have an Easter egg hunt coming up this coming uh, Saturday, and we are in need of workers. We're also in need of cupcakes. There's a sign-up sheet for that. Also, remember our Wednesday night meal. If you're coming, please sign up uh, for that. And there's several senior adult activities, and there's uh, one labor of love project coming up on Thursday, and that's the couponing class. So if you need any more information about any of those things, you can see the ones that names are listed for those. Any other announcements this morning? Thank you, Cynthia. Any other announcements? Any other announcements this morning? Well, good to see each of you here this morning. And looking around, we've got some guests here with us, and we're glad you chose to come and worship with us this morning. If you are a member of our church, I want to ask you to stand. If you're a guest, stay seated so we can see who you are, and we want to come by and welcome you this morning, okay? <laughs>
Amen. Let's all stand together. Aren't you glad that Jesus saves this morning? My, my. There wouldn't be a one of us here if it wasn't for the time that he died on the cross for each and every one of us. Amen. Saved our souls that we might go to heaven one day when he comes back after us. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus saves this morning. Hallelujah. Let's see.
Ghost shows up, we'll have church. Holy Ghost has showed up this morning, and we're going to have church today. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you that Jesus saves. Thank you for an empty tomb. Thank you for a risen Savior. Thank you, Father, for all the precious promises that we claim today because, Father, you fulfilled every promise you made to us. And Father, thank you for this church that is gathered today to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, thank you for this opportunity to give our tithes and our offerings to you. Bless the gift and the giver. Father, we serve an amazing, wonderful God today. Thank you for how his name has been lifted up in song today. Thank you for the worship band and the choir and how they've drawn us closer to you and prepared our hearts to worship you. And Father, we just turn this morning over to you. Pray that everything we do give you honor and glory. Father, bless this offering now. In Jesus' name we pray.
everything we can give by your plan that's just the way it is That's what you Good job. And that's our junior youth girls. And I think the kids, if they want to go to Bible Buddies now, they can go on to Bible Buddies. All of our kids, if they want to go on to Bible Buddies. Well, it's hard to believe, but you know, Easter's almost on us. Next Sunday's Palm Sunday. Next Sunday morning, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper together as a church. And next Sunday morning will be Easter Sunday morning. We'll have our sunrise service at 7, followed by breakfast. The men are going to be fixing breakfast again uh, this year. And then we'll have Sunday school and morning worship, just like uh, we normally do to regular times. So looking forward to a wonderful celebration of, of Easter this year. If you'll take your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 24. And the message this morning is our response to the resurrection. Our response to the resurrection. You know, we see and we hear and we question and we consider the resurrection of Jesus. And, and after we, we talk about the resurrection, we listen to all the facts about the resurrection, we consider all that there is to consider about the resurrection, we have a choice to make. We can either believe in the resurrection of Jesus or we can choose not to believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Do you remember years ago, I don't remember exactly how long ago it's been, but I can remember watching it on TV, 
But do you remember when man first set foot on the moon? Do you remember watching him come out of that, uh, whatever you call the, the lunar craft he got out of and stepped out on the moon? And I think he said it was a, a small step for man, but a giant step. I don't remember exactly how he said it. But I remember watching that on TV, and I can remember right where I was sitting. I was at my mama and papa Quick's house. And as I sat there and watched it, my papa Quick said, they're not really on the moon. <laughs> he said, they're, they're, they've got this set up somewhere, and, and they're just trying to make us believe that they're on the moon. But do you remember watching that? And when you were watching that, did you really believe what was happening? Did you really believe what you were watching on TV? Let me ask you this, do you believe it now? Do you believe it now? You know, same can be said about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There are those who say, well, it was just an illusion. There are those who say it was just a trick to try to make people believe that in a person who wasn't what he claimed that he really was. Do you believe in Jesus or not? Do you believe in his resurrection or not? And this morning I want to share with you what our response to the resurrection ought to be. Father, bless the reading of your word that we're going to share this morning. Pray you bless this message today. All that have ears to hear and hearts to obey, I pray we'd believe with all of our hearts today that that tomb is empty, that we serve a risen Savior. Thank you today for Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, one of our responses to the resurrection ought to be that it ought to cause us to believe even more than we've ever believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, we live in a world today where people consider Jesus, but a lot of people don't really believe in Jesus. Now let me say that again. Let that kind of sink in. There's a lot of people who consider Jesus. They may talk about Jesus. They may discuss Jesus. But there's a lot of people who do not believe in Jesus Christ as who he says he is and what he said he'd do. I heard a story about a, a burglar that broke into this house. He broke into the house and he was looking around to see what he could steal. He had his pillowcase and he started stuffing stuff in the pillowcase, and as he was going around putting stuff in the pillowcase, he heard this voice say, Jesus is watching you. He looked around. He didn't see anybody. So he just kind of thought maybe he was hearing things. So he continued stuffing stuff in his pillowcase, stealing all he could steal, going through the house, and again, again he heard this voice say, Jesus is watching you. So he started looking around to see where this voice was coming, and he shined a flashlight over in the corner, and he saw a bird cage. And in the bird cage, there was a parrot. And he walked up to that parrot, and he said to the parrot, Are you talking to me? The parrot said, Yes. He said, Jesus is watching you. He said, What's your name, parrot? Parrot said, my name is Moses. <laughs> and the burglar looked at him and said, well, what kind of a name is Moses? What kind of a family would give a, a bird the name of Moses? And the parrot looked at him and said, the same kind of people that named their pit bull Jesus. <laughs> now, I believe in Jesus but I wouldn't want to meet, meet a pit bull named Jesus, would you? But there is no question in my mind this morning, folks. There's no question in my mind. I believe it with all my heart. Jesus was who he claimed he was. And he did what he claimed he would do. He came from earth and lived, uh, came from heaven, lived on this earth over 2,000 years ago. He performed many miracles. He raised folks from the dead. He fed the multitudes. He cast out demons. He died on a cross. He bore my sins and your sins in his body so that we might believe in him and trust in him and someday go to heaven and spend eternity with him. But there are many people who only consider Jesus. 
but they are somehow kept from believing in him and trusting in him as their Savior and as their Lord. Look with me in Luke 24, verse 13 through 16. Luke 24, verse 13 through 16. And two, of, and behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus drew himself near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Now these two disciples were kept from recognizing who Jesus was. They were walking with Jesus. They were talking with Jesus. They believed in Jesus. But they didn't recognize Jesus as he walked with them and talked to them. Jesus kept these two disciples from recognizing him. But folks, we live in a world that is different today. It's not Jesus who keeps people from recognizing him today. Because Jesus wants people to know him. Jesus wants people to be saved. Jesus wants people to believe in him and trust in him for their salvation. Folks, it's the world that keeps people from believing in Jesus today. It's the devil who keeps people from believing in Jesus today. Years ago when the Beatles were popular, you remember the Beatles, don't you? John Lennon was one of the Beatles. John Lennon was an atheist, and he professed atheism, and he was always talking against Christianity. And he said one time that Christianity will shrink. Christianity will go away. It will vanish. He said, I don't need to argue with that. It'll be proven true. And then he made a statement, and I'm sure you all remember this statement. John Lennon said, the Beatles are more popular right now than Jesus is. you remember when he said that? He said, the Beatles are more popular right now than Jesus is. And he said, I know what will go first. He said, rock and roll's here forever, but Christianity will pass away. Folks, listen, John Lennon's been gone for a long time. He was shot at an early age. Let me tell you something, Christianity's still going strong. Christianity is still going strong. Many people today talk about Jesus. Many people talk today about Christianity. They'll talk about religion in general, but they don't recognize Jesus Christ as the Son of God. They want to believe, but they're kept from recognizing Him as the Son of God. What is it that keeps them from recognizing that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the Savior of the world? It's not God. Folks, it's the world. It's the evil one that's in the world that keeps people from believing in Jesus and the promise of eternal life. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, 16, 17, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Folks, the things of this world can keep people from believing in Jesus. If people listen to the world enough, if people listen to the teachings of the world enough, and people get all wrapped up in what's going on in the world, they'll say no to Jesus and they'll say no to Christianity. And that's what we see happening in the world today. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he can devour. And folks, he's doing a good job of devouring us today. So there are those people who will consider Jesus, but they don't believe in Jesus. They'll consider Jesus, but they don't want to put their faith and their trust in Jesus. Here's a second response to the resurrection. There are some people who know Scripture, but they don't believe Scripture. Folks, listen to me. It's a dangerous thing to know Scripture, but not believe the Scripture. 
Luke 24, verse 25, 26, and 27. It says, Then he said unto them, O fools, Jesus talking to the two on the road to Emmaus, he said, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning itself. Jesus said, let me explain to you the scripture so that you can not only know the scripture, but you can understand the scripture and you can, un you can believe the scripture. Jesus was saying, how foolish you are not to believe the scripture. Folks, if the Bible is the living and abiding word of God as we believe they are, then a person is foolish not to believe the Bible and everything the Bible says about Jesus and everything the Bible says about God. And do you know why many people don't believe the Bible? They don't believe the Bible because they don't know the Bible. They don't read the Bible. They don't take time to understand the Bible and let God speak to them what God wants them to hear. I don't understand everything there is to understand in God's Word, but I'm willing to accept it by faith. I don't understand everything I read, but I believe it by faith because God said it. And God said it. Folks, let me ask you something this morning. Do you believe the message of the Bible? Do you believe what the Bible says about Jesus? Do you believe what the Bible says about his life on earth, about his death on the cross, about his resurrection from the dead? He, folks, your life hangs in the balance of whether you believe what the Bible says is true or not. Where you're going to spend eternity depends on whether you believe the Bible to be true or not. In Luke 24, verse 30 through 35, it says, It came to pass, and he set it meat with them, and took bread, and blessed it and break it and gave it to them and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight and they said one to another heart burned within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together with them and them that were with them saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known unto them in the breaking of the bread. Folks, these men finally got it. These men finally believed the message. They finally believed the scripture. They finally believed what they had been taught about Jesus, what they had heard about Jesus. And when they heard about it, they got excited because what they believed in their heart to be true was true. They said, it is true. It's true. It's really true. Jesus has risen from the dead. They believed it, and they wanted to spread the message about a risen Savior. Folks, what are we going to do with the resurrection of Jesus? We say we believe it, but are we excited about it? We say we believe the resurrection of Jesus, but do we believe it to the point we're willing to share it with other people and they say, this is what I believe, this is what the Bible says, and I know that the Bible is true? What are we going to do with the resurrection of Jesus? Do we really believe it? Do we really believe what the Bible says about the resurrection? You know, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is one of the most provable facts in all of history. Have you ever thought about that? It's one of the most provable facts in all of history, but it's also one of the most deniable things in all of history. There is more evidence that Jesus Christ rose from the grave than any other fact in history. Let me say that again. There's more evidence that Jesus Christ rose from the grave than any other fact in history. Folks, today, if you are a follower of the Islamic faith, you can visit the tomb of 
the Islamic faith's leader, Mohammed. You know why you can visit his tomb? Because he's still in the tomb. He's still dead. Today, the followers of Buddhists and that religion can go to the grave of their founder, Buddha, and they can visit his grave. Do you know why they can visit his grave? Because he's still in the grave. You can go to the graves of past presidents. You can go to the graves of past historical figures. You can go and you can visit the graves of your loved ones because they're in the grave. But you cannot go and visit the burial place of the greatest man who ever lived, Jesus Christ, because he rose from the dead and he lives forever. His tomb is empty. Folks, we serve a risen Savior today. And that's why the choir could sing the way they sung that song, Jesus Saves. I don't think I've ever heard our choir sing like they sung this morning. They were singing from their heart. And when you know that Jesus Christ is a risen Savior, when you know He won victory over death in the grave, we can sing, Jesus Saves, Jesus Saves. Folks, listen. We've got more to celebrate as a church than anybody in the world. We've got a Bible that tells us all about God, all about Jesus, all about the promises that he's made to us. We've got an empty tomb that tells us that Jesus Christ is alive and sitting at the right hand of the Father. And one of these days, folks, I believe it's going to be real soon, one of these days he's going to come and he's going to get his church and he's going to take us home and he's going to be with us forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and what a day of rejoicing that's going to be. Right now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. One of these days we're going to be up there with him and we're going to enjoy all that he's prepared for us because he won the victory over death and the grave. Aren't you glad we serve a risen Savior today? And folks, it's a shame that we just celebrate that fact once a year. Every time we come to worship and celebrate the fact, we serve a risen Savior. He's alive. He's in the world today, and greater is He that's in the world than to, to see it's in our heart and it's in the world. I'm thankful that we serve an all-powerful Savior today. And as bad as this old world's getting, folks, Jesus is still on the throne. God is still in control. What's your response going to be to the resurrection? Believe in Jesus with all your heart. Believe in his word. Believe it to be true. And then tell everybody that you know, Jesus is alive. Father, I just want to thank you this morning that we serve a risen Savior. I just want to thank you this morning that we serve a Savior this morning who won victory over death and the grave and sitting at the right hand of the Father and right now is interceding for each and every one of us. And he's still a saving Savior. If there's one in this place today that's lost without Jesus, I pray that today would be their day of salvation. If there's one here today who's never believed in Jesus as their personal Savior, who's never confessed their sins to him, I pray they'd come this morning. Say, Lord, I want you to come into my heart. I want you to be my Savior. I want to claim that promise today. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. I pray for those that came to church this morning with a hurt or a need or a burden. And as you sat in the pew this morning, you were ministered to. Maybe you were ministered to as the Holy Spirit spoke to you through a song. Maybe the Holy Spirit spoke to you through a pat on the back, through a word of encouragement. Maybe the Holy Spirit spoke to you some words that you needed to hear this morning to lift you up. But you were encouraged. You were comforted. Your needs were met by being in this place today. Listen to what the Spirit of God's saying to you right now. And say yes to whatever it is He's whispering to you about. I pray for those who need to come tonight with our church today. This is where God wants you to worship. God wants you to serve. I pray you'd come and put your life in His hands. Maybe
maybe you just need to come and kneel there in the altar and pray. And say, God, every day I just kind of take you for granted. God, I know I serve a risen Savior. I know he's in the world today. I know he's on the throne. I know he's taking care of me. But Lord, I just take you for granted. I just want to tell you how much I love you. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you. I just want to show you, Father, that I want to serve you. Be obedient. Father, I don't know what you need to do during this time of visitation, but I do know this. I know you're speaking to our hearts this morning. We've got ears to hear and hearts to obey. We'll say, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Lord, we just turn this time of invitation over to you. This is your time. You do with it any way you see fit. And we'll give you the honor and the glory. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as we sing together.